Hey, this is Brian from DisableMyCable.com, and today I want to give you an update on my Verizon 5G home internet service after nine months to see if it's right for you. I'll talk about my download speeds and reliability. But first, there's been a lot of big news from Verizon regarding their new gateway and their pricing. Let's talk about the pricing first. Verizon has increased the price of their plans for new users by $20 a month, basically. Or another way to look at it is that they've decreased speeds from 300 megabits per second to 100 megabits per second for their entry level plan. So the, the plan that I have costs $50 a month for 300 megabits per second. New years, users will have to pay $70 a month for 300 megabits per second. Or if they, uh, stick with the entry level plan, they only get 100 megabits per second. So it's, it's a cost increase or speed decrease, depending on how you look at it. Existing uh, customers are grandfathered in to the old pricing plan for at least two years, and maybe more depending on when you signed up. Uh, so this is obviously not good news. Uh, I have the complete pricing breakdown in my previous video. You can check it out. The other big news from Verizon is their new gateway. And this is uh, much better news. Uh, it's just starting to ship, and which, is, which I was surprised by. I didn't think it would be shipping this soon, but they shipped when they said they would. And people are just now starting to get them uh, in their homes and trying them out. So I don't have a lot of information on them, but so far people are saying they're good. They're getting higher speeds, uh, and it does have the better Wi-Fi standard. It has a um, signal meter right on the unit itself, which should really help with finding the best signal strength in your home. So it's got a lot of good things. Like I said, it's still very early, but that seems like a cool box, uh, just judging by the specs and the preliminary feedback that I'm seeing um, on social media. So uh, I'm kind of excited about that. And that's a, a plus for people who are signing up now. Um, I basically already have my, the old gateway, and they're probably not going to send me a new one anytime soon unless I have a problem with mine. So some people have actually been able to get new ones if they had problems with their current cube units. So that's the, on the new gateway. Let's talk about reliability and speed after nine months. So of course, a lot of people said when Verizon came out with the service that speed is going to degrade. They're just going to overwhelm their uh, cellular networks just signing up people like crazy and speeds you know may be fine at first but then they'll go uh, they'll become terrible later on well i haven't found that i, I actually i just uh, did a speed check today and i and i got 330 megabits per second which is the highest speed the second highest speed i've measured on my verizon uh, 5g home service since i got it and I've been consistently getting between 220 to 280 megabits per second uh, when I measure th at various times throughout the day. So it's pretty much been as advertised and it's just as fast now as it was the day I got it. So uh, the speed front has been very good and Verizon has done a good job of not overwhelming their network as far as I can see in my area. Now let's talk about reliability and uptime. So uh, for the first five months that I had my service, I had zero downtime. It, it was very solid. Um, I got mine in December of 2022, and through May it was fine, but in, in the middle of May, I actually did have some downtime. I had three um, times when my cable, or when my um, Verizon internet went down. Now, they turned out to be very uh, easy to fix. All I had to do is reboot my cube gateway. And it, that takes about two minutes and my internet was up after that. Um, but still, uh, these interruptions, while they don't uh, it result in a lot of lost work, uh, they, are, they can be very embarrassing if you do a lot of Zoom calls. Now I work from home, so I'm doing Zoom calls all the time. And luckily I haven't had any downtime in the middle of a Zoom call, but that would have looked really bad if I would have lost internet for two minutes while my customers are waiting at the other end and wondering where I am and why my internet's so bad. So 
it is something I'm concerned about. It's not a showstopper yet. Um, in uh, June, I had uh, one more instance of this downtime. In July, I had no instances of downtime. It was solid. And then in August, this month, or the, the last month, I had three instances of downtime. And the last one was a little bit different. It was more like a slowdown, like the speed went way down. I rebooted and then it went back up. So that was perhaps not as bad. But like I said, these uh, cases of downtime, they're not showstoppers for me right now. And they're very short periods of time that you can fix right away. But I'm, I, I would be really... Um, uh, dissatisfied with the service if it happened any more than it's than it's happening now. And for some people uh, online, uh, people are complaining. Some people are complaining that it happens like every day, which I think would be totally unacceptable. Uh, some people have um, exchanged called Verizon and exchanged their gateway for a new unit, and that solved the problem. And for other people, uh, Verizon had to fix something in their cell tower and, and that fixed the problem and for other people they just couldn't never found the problem so uh, if that is your situation where you're getting downtime every day or every hour you definitely got to call Verizon and if they if they can't fix it you got to return the unit uh, because that is uh, not acceptable and it's not how it's supposed to work um, so now if you compare this to uh, my cable internet experience that generally had fewer instances of downtime. Like that would go down maybe once a year or twice a year. But those uh, um, instances would be very long, sometimes four or five hours of downtime. So when cable went down, you knew it was really bad, especially if I'd go outside and I'd see a guy on the telephone pole messing with the cables out there. I knew you know, it's going to be four hours until this thing's fixed. So as far as lost productivity, Cable internet uh, downtime was worse, but having the more frequent downtime um, is is no fun either, especially if it happens during a call. And but like I said, so far it hasn't been bad. It's been between zero and a max of three times, three cases of downtime per month for me. So it's not the end of the world. It's something I'm gonna keep uh, looking for, and I will. Uh, keep track of it and keep you guys updated on my downtime. And there's other, other people that have no downtime. So it kind of varies uh, like, like so many factors. It, it varies according to where you are and uh, what, uh, how far you are from your towers in the area. So I hope this uh, video was helpful. If you are looking to buy uh, or looking to get Verizon 5G home internet, I still like it. I still use it every day as my only source of internet, so I'm still a big fan. But like I said, I will keep track of these downtime incidents and keep you informed uh, on this channel. So if you want to see my full review of Verizon 5G home internet, check out my blog, disablemycable.com, and I keep that article always updated with the latest uh, pricing and um, uh, everything that I find out as I use the unit. So check out my blog, disablemycable.com. Thanks a lot.